So you like butter, and I don't mean the BTS song. I mean like the stuff you know you put on food and it makes it nice and juicy. You know what I'm saying? That kind of butter. Yeah. Hey guys, we're Methods by Kai. I'm Kai, and today we're back once again taking a look at how to make this kind of material that you see here on the screen. Uh, right. Well, you don't you don't see anything. Okay. Well, we're just gonna get started. Listen, I don't want to I don't want to let the cat out the bag. You know, you saw it on the thumbnail, all right? Listen, it's gonna be fine. All right, you're gonna love it. It's gonna be amazing. Ready for this? So first thing I want to do is we can make it on the cube. We could do that. We never use default. We're going to use default cube. We're, we're, we're going to use default cube. Yep. All right. Here we go. Let's go. I'm, I'm excited for him. This is his big day. We're doing it. All right. We're going to split our window into two by putting my cursor up in the top left and then just clicking and dragging over until it splits into two. And then I'm going to change this uh, little button right here. Click this and go down to the shader editor. Boom. Now you can see that we have these uh, nodes here, which is going to help us out a little bit when we create the material. I'm gonna this so we have a little bit more. Face. There we go. Um, all right. Now we can turn this to rendered viewport shading over here by hitting this little button uh, all the way to the right. Click that, and it'll show you what the scene looks like when it is being rendered. I don't know why it's taking so long. There we go. Um, looks good. Nice. You love to see it. Now the next thing we need to do is go ahead and hit Shift A, and we're gonna search for a noise uh, texture right there. Grab that. Now, what I want to do is because I want to decide the colors instead of having it decide for us. So if you plug the color of the noise into the color of the other principal BSDF, it's going to just make it random colors. So literally any color that it wants to make it. So instead of this happening, I want to go ahead and add in a color ramp node so we can decide the color so it doesn't have to pick for us. So hit shift A and search for a color ramp node. Boom. Put that right there in the middle. Bop, right there. Now it splits it and then it connects it in between. Now you can see that it's only black and white, and that's because these values that we have here is black and white. So if you go ahead and change these colors, like let's say a, a purple, like pink, like that, like hot pink, and we change this to like a blue, you can see we have we have like the hot pink and the hot and the, and the blue in there. So move these sliders around, make it more blue or less blue, more pink or less pink. Um, so now what we can do, I really want to go ahead and add in a constant instead of linear, so we can change the constant. So what this means is going to be hard edged, so it's like, you know, not soft or whatever you want to call it. So you see when I pull this back now, it looks like, like that, which is cool, like a cow or something, like cow spots. If you put it back to um, white, black, it looks like a cow, right? Very, very cool stuff. So the colors that I want to do, I believe is going to be like, um, I want to do something with orange. We haven't done something with orange in a while, so do orange like that. And we're going to go ahead and do, oh, this reminds me of something. Oh, we'll do orange and blue. It actually looks so cool together. Okay. I want to do one more color though. So we're going to do, we're going to do that on a second, separate one though, because I want that to be an emission uh, shader. So we're going to do that separately. Um, let's go ahead and change around the values of the noise texture really quickly. So we can change the um, detail to make it look like it has a little bit more, you know, scale. <laughs> yeah, so something like that. And we can turn it down and make it more smooth, which I also kind of like. But for this, I think we're going to go somewhere in the middle, uh, maybe about 2. Point yeah, sure. We can turn the roughness uh, up or down as well. I'm going to leave the roughness on about 0.6 or maybe 0.7 around there. We can turn the distortion up a little bit too, um, but I don't really want some distortion. I kind of want it to be more freeform. So we'll put that back on zero. Nice. Now, I don't want this to shine at all. So we'll turn down uh, specular all the way. We'll turn down roughness all the way, or you can turn it up actually. Really, Either way works. I might, I might turn it up to all the way. Um, Cool, cool, cool. So now with that done, I want to go ahead and maybe add in one more thing here. So hit shift A and search or a magic, yeah, we never use magic texture, so I just wanted to do something kind of different today. Add in a magic texture, and plug the color into maybe the scale, maybe, we'll see. Um, now this should give us a nice little, there we go, that should give us a nice little uh, texture we can work with, but it's too much, obviously, so we're gonna go ahead and uh, kind of dial this down a little bit by uh, making the scale a little bit bigger. Let's turn the distortion up a little bit, and I don't wanna put it in the scale, maybe one of these is gonna look different than I want, I don't wanna have to mix it with something. Ooh, okay. Let's turn the distortion back down. Um, ooh. Let's turn it to zero. Uh, actually, no, not zero. Sorry, one. Turn it to one, and then we can turn the scale. I don't want it to be like, yeah, like that. There you go. That's what I wanted. Okay, I want it to be like, like you know, slices. Like, that looks really cool. Much better than than that. Okay, cool, 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 cool. Nice. With that done, I want to go ahead and now create the mission um, part of the material here. So let's go ahead and these around, organize them up a little bit, or organize a little bit more. uniform. You know what I mean? You guys ever have a school uniform you had to wear? I hated. It. Terrible. So bad. Everyone looked exactly the same. All right. <laughs> we belong in Hunger Games. Um, so let's go ahead and hit search. We're going to go ahead and add in an emission shader. So put that right there. Um, and uh, what we need to do with that is we can't just add this in. We have to actually mix it together. So I'm going to put this underneath the principal BSDF shader. Move the material output back a little bit. Hit Shift A. Search for a mixed shader. There we go. 
Put that, no, not, not make shader. Math shader, sorry. We're going to search for math. That's my fault. Oh, that in right there. I've, I've thrown twice now. Mix. Make sure it says mix shader, not mix RGB. There we go. <laughs> All right, we're going to add in a mix shader. We're going to put the emission in right there. There you go. And now what we need to do is, as you can see, it's going to like make it halfway like this. So to fix that, we're going to go ahead and just copy and paste these three that we have here. So it's Shift D. Duplicate these down there. Put the color into the emission. Now you can see, do this. It's going to look exactly the same, just bright. Like, there you go. See, this is just bright. So now if I... Uh, if I make the entire world black, this you can see it's just it's glowing. I'm turning my overlays off as well. It's just glowing instead of looking like this. Okay, wait, there you go. Something like that. It's just glowing now. So um, now to fix this to to make it like look different, I'm gonna go ahead and change these values. So we're gonna change the orange black. And we're gonna change the blue. Oops, change the blue. Uh, we're gonna make it a different value first of all, and then we're gonna change it to a uh, bright bright yellow like that. Very very cool. Def. Now, with that done, I want to change the emission value. So we'll make it uh, really, really bright by going ahead and changing it to 15. There you go. Now it looks really, really cool and really bright and glowy and nice and stuff. Um, now, with the uh, noise and the magic, I want to make this a different texture. So we'll go ahead and just grab both these by dragging a box over top of them and then delete and hitting Shift A and searching for a new uh, thing, which I want to add back in the noise texture. We'll do it from scratch. So add in the noise. And then we'll hit uh, put the color into the factor of the color ramp. Now, with that done, I want to go ahead and change these values a lot. I want these to be really distorted. We'll go ahead and uh, make this uh, look like this. And then we'll probably pull the detail up in the scale. We might pull the scale down to like 0.5-ish like that. And then maybe we'll turn the rough up a little bit. So it's like scratchy, which looks cool. Uh, maybe this, Maybe the scale. I don't know. That looked so cool. Wait. Okay, we'll do that. We'll do that instead. Okay. Um, I think I want to actually maybe undo all the roughness and detail from the first one. Oh, cool. I just really love these kind of animated materials recently. We're doing quite a lot of them. So this is going to be kind of like maybe mixing two uh, materials together using the mix shader to add to, to mix different materials together. Is I think what this is gonna be about. So go ahead and... and uh, Let's go ahead and add in the um, texture coordinate nodes. So hit Shift A and search for a texture coordinate. Oh, I gotta type it better than that. <laughs> texture coordinate node. There we go. And we'll put that there. And then in between this and the noise texture, we'll add in a mapping. So hit Shift A and search for map. Shift A and search for mapping. There we go. Put that right there. Plug the vector in. Plug the, the generated into the vector. I believe it's a generated, not the normal. Um, now when we go ahead and change. So basically, what these do is these two nodes right here they make it so we can move around this material the yellow without having to like scale it because we can move it like this right but like it's it's like scaling and getting like detailed and not detailed and whatnot and stuff so oh this looks that looks so cool i want to do like a um a night sky or something with this that looks that's a really good way to do that. that's really cool might do a tutorial on that very very soon keep an eye out for that um, let's go ahead and I move this around. So if I, if I change the location, you can see that it moves now and it does not like scale itself. It's just moving infinitely and, and we can loop this as well because it will literally infinitely loop. You can see, if you pay attention, you'll see this, this, this like little sla slash, uh, come across the screen multiple times if I just keep going enough. Um, but you can see that's like, it's so, so, so much easier to animate something this way, um, than to have to, uh, it a different way the, the texture coordinate node and the mapping node are really really handy when it comes to trying to animate materials in blender so let's go ahead and do that really quickly go ahead and just um just very subtly so i'll go ahead and change my start frame to zero over my cursor we can do also do rotation as well rotation looks rotation looks really cool we'll go ahead and maybe do a couple of them so let's go ahead and hover my cursor over top of x hit i and maybe go to frame 50 and then we'll change it to like something really low, like one hit I. We'll go to like frame 10 and we'll uh, hover my cursor over top of Y, hit I. And then on frame 60, we'll change it to one and hit I. You see where this is going? 20, change uh, Z, hit uh, hover your cursor over top, hit I. Go to frame 70 and then change it to one and then hit I. Now you can see we can do this over and over again. And then it'll get like this really, really cool looking effect. Obviously it's, you know, we need to do the rest of them. It's going to look like it just like starts zooming to the left and to the right and stuff like that. 
this is when we do the rotation and all these different things at the same time so it all looks like it's moving uh simultaneously so let, really quickly i'm gonna go do that with the rotation as well uh i and then 40 the one's not gonna be enough that will do like 50 go and then and cursor 50 50 and this is like this is like super easy to do it just takes a lot of uh time you can also do this you can do this with the um you can do this like manually by not manually sorry by just duplicating the keyframes but uh but i like doing things manually especially when it's like super simple and i'm just um so let's go ahead and maybe do the i don't want the scale though the scale's gonna mess it up so we'll do like that and we'll just kind of look at it you see how we if you combine all these together you can get some really cool things but once it gets to the end obviously it does all that fast stuff because it's staggered but just if you keep animating them you know if you go back down or when when this gets to one like right here if you go 50 frames again and then go back down to zero i and for the next one zero i the next one zero i i can see uh into the rotation but you can see that it goes back down now with the rotate with the location sorry and it keeps moving um it does all the really jerky stuff because uh because i need to keep animating but as you can see you get some really really cool animated effects um with materials like this and the other one they're completely animatable separately so you can go ahead and uh, d duplicate these mapping nodes to the top up here and, ch and plug this into the vector and then we can go ahead and literally do the same exact do the same exact thing with the with the uh material that's underneath it which is very very cool see here it, this one is now animated as well if we oh, if we add some keyframes so let's go real quickly and just the one underneath it the yellow and blue orange and blue sorry um so we can just add in a keyframe really quickly and then move it uh like there and you can see now when we play this it'll just start moving and there you go now that both of the materials are moving separately which is really really cool and uh very very fun to animate and very very fun to work with and it looks so cool like what can i say you know what can i say i hope you ladies and gentlemen enjoyed today's tutorial about how to like animate two different materials separately on the same object but uh, but yeah so i'll see you in the next one but until then bye bye